video, I'm going to show you how you can separate the components of a mixture of different compounds using chromatography paper. Let's discuss the theory and the objective of this experiment, and then we will come back and I will show you the details on the experimental procedure. Okay, so chromatography is one of the separation techniques that we can use to separate mixtures, uh, components from each other. Now, we have discussed in the theory the following example where we have a mixture of four different components, A, B, C, and D. And then we will run the chromatography paper on this mixture to see the separation. Now, we have discussed two factors. The first one is the affinity to paper, and the second one is the affinity to the solvent. Now, paper is called the stationary phase, and the solvent is called the mobile phase. Paper is called the stationary phase because it doesn't move, and solvent is the mobile phase because it moves across the paper. Now, in this example, we can see that A has moved the slowest on the paper, and B has moved the fastest on the paper. In this case, what, do, what we can say regarding the affinity to paper, we can say that A has the strongest affinity to paper and B has the uh, lowest affinity to paper. Now regarding the affinity to the solvent, we can say that B has moved the fastest with the solvent and therefore it has the highest affinity to the solvent. However, A was moving slowly with the solvent and therefore the affinity to the solvent is very weak. So in today's example, we have a mixture of three dyes. Now we have the blue dye, which is called the blue one, the red dye, which is called the red 40, and the yellow dye, which is called the yellow 5. We are going to use five different solvents. And this is the cellulose molecule that represents the paper. Now, in order to discuss the affinity to the paper and affinity to the solvent, we will be using the intermolecular forces concept. And therefore now, by looking at the structure of every molecule, we will be able to tell the type of intermolecular interactions that the molecule can carry on with the solvent and with the paper. If the intermolecular interactions are strong with the paper, for example, then the affinity to the paper will be high. If the intermolecular interactions are strong with the solvent, the affinity to the solvent will be high. Now, looking at these different molecules, let's start with the blue one, for example. Now, looking at the blue one, the blue one has three sulfonate ions. Now, sulfonate ions, they can interact with the paper, which has hydroxies and which, which is considered as a polar molecule. You can have an ion-dipole interaction with the paper, which is a strong interaction. Moreover, you can have hydrogen bonding between the nitrogen here in the blue dye and the hydrogen here on the oxygen. So basically, you can have a strong interaction with the paper. Now, the interaction will not be as strong as the red, for example, because red can hydrogen bond with the paper and also can have the uh, ion-dipole interaction and also the dipole-dipole interaction with the paper. Now, for the yellow, it has the ion-dipole, it has the hydrogen bonding because of the OH in here and also because of this carboxylate, so it will have a strong interaction with the paper. Now, which one will have the strongest interaction with the paper? You will judge it based on the separation. So the one that will move the slowest on the paper, it means it has the highest affinity to the paper. Now, looking at the different solvents, we have hexane, ethanol, topropanol, water, and acetone. Now, from these five solvents, we can see that ethanol, topropanol, and water they can carry hydrogen bonding with the dyes, and therefore they will have a strong interaction. Now, hexane is a nonpolar molecule, and it will only carry on London dispersion force or Van der Waals force 
with the molecules. Now acetone, acetone is a polar molecule. It can uh, carry on dipole-dipole interaction, but also the oxygen in the acetone can carry on hydrogen bonding with the hydrogens of the hydroxides in the yellow dye and the red dye. So basically, now after running your experiment and looking at the separation on your paper, you will be able to have a better judgment or justification on the intermolecular interactions between the molecules and the solvents or the molecules and the paper. Now one more thing that we will need to uh, measure when we finish our experiment is what is called the retention factor. Now the retention factor, which we call RF, it's equal to. Now if you look at this image in here, you can see it's equal to D1 and divided by D2. Now D1 is the distance traveled by the die from the starting point, which is this one, to where it traveled, and this is D1. Now D2 is the distance traveled by the solvent from the starting point until the end point. And therefore, D1 will always be smaller or equal to D2, and therefore RF has to be always smaller or equal to 1. Molecules with high affinity to the paper will have a small RF and molecules with high affinity to the solvent will have high RF. Now let's go back to take a look on the experimental procedure for this investigation. Great, so now that we know the objective of our experiment and we have an idea how the separation will work on the chromatography paper, it's time now to run our experiment. We are given a mixture of three dyes. Now, since the three dyes are blue, red, and yellow, the mixture will look a green. Now, what we have to do, we will put our mixture on the paper, and we will run the paper and look at the separation. But before that, we will need to prepare our paper. Preparing the paper, it's easy, but it has some specific details that we have to watch for. The very first thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that the starting line on the paper, it doesn't touch the solvent inside the beaker. And that's why we will draw our starting line a little bit high, around one centimeter. We will draw a tick in the middle of the line just to make sure that this is where we are going to put our mixture. Next. To make sure that the solvent will run straight up on the paper, we will be cutting the corners of the paper, small cuts for the corners, just to make sure that the solvent will run up straight. And this is how the paper will look like, we'll cut the small corners. Now that our paper is ready, because we have five solvents, we will make sure to write down on the top of the paper the name of the solvent. In this case, for example, I will say acetone. So in here, I will say acetone. Now I need to add uh, the mixture to the paper. And in this case, what I can do, I can just take one or two drops, or one drop of my mixture. I don't need more than this. Then I will take small disposable pipette and I will just make sure that I have some of this in my, some of the mixture inside the pipette, this much. Now all what I have to do is to make sure to place the uh, mixture on my paper this way. So as you can see in here, the spot is not very big and is not very small at the same time. So now that I have prepared my paper, all what I can do now is using a graduated cylinder, I will take around 10 milliliter of the solvent, say for example, take 10 milliliter 
around 10. Now I can either use a beaker or I can use a chromatography paper jar. Now if I use the beaker, I add the solvent to the beaker and all that I have to do, I'll place the paper inside the beaker and watch for the migration of the solvent on the paper. Okay, so now that I have uh, waited enough time for the mixture to separate on the chromatography paper, as you could notice, there's only one solvent where the separation works uh, in, in a perfect way. So now that I have the separation, all what I have to do, I have to make sure to dry my paper so the solvent doesn't go uh, above the uh, end line. Now using a heat gun, you can dry your paper and make sure to be careful when using the heat gun. And now that I have dried my paper, I can take the paper and of course I know where my end line is. I can just measure the uh, distance traveled by the solvent and I can also measure the distance traveled by, the, by each die and therefore calculate the RF for each time. I hope this video is helpful to you. I'll see you next time.